Let's plumb up Ecotech Marine's Vectra M1 return pump. Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to plumb the Ecotech Vectra M1 return pump using Ecotech Marine's hose barb kit. For those of you following my new build, my new tank and stand are finally in. I'll be showcasing both in a future video. Also follow me on Instagram and Facebook to receive real-time updates. The links to both are down below in the description. Before we get into this video, I wanted to thank Neptune Systems for clearing up the air as to why Ecotech Marine's return pumps are not compatible with the Apex controller. A few weeks ago, I released a rant video on this topic, and at the time, no one knew who to blame for the decision of making the Vectra pumps non-compatible. Neptune Systems somehow picked up my video and immediately replied in my comments. Neptune Systems stated that they've been trying to work with Ecotech Marine for the past two years to no avail. Shortly after this comment was posted in my video, I intercepted another post by Neptune Systems a few days later on Neptune's forum. In that post, Neptune Systems stated Ecotech was provided with the software coding to make the pumps compatible with their controllers, but yet have not done so. Again, I'm not trying to dismiss the quality of the Vectra M1 pump, it's just really disappointing that the pump was released for sale while never mentioning the pump would not be compatible with the Apex. If you own this pump, you made a great choice, so don't let my mini ramp bring you down. Okay, so enough with the disparaging comments, let's dive into getting this pump properly plumbed up. We'll be concentrating on two main parts for the Vectra pump. The collar, which is the larger of the two pieces and screws down onto the output of the pump, and the coupling, which is the part that holds the 3 quarter inch PVC or the 3 quarter inch hose barb. For my setup, I need a strong and reliable pump to push water from my salt water mixing station all the way upstairs to the main display for bucketless water changes. There is about a 15 foot run with at least 4 90 degree turns. The Vectra M1 pump is advertised to push 2,000 gallons per hour at 21 and a half feet of head pressure. My plan is to attach a 3 quarter inch hose barb to the coupling of the Vectra and attach a 3 quarter inch hose to that. The opposite end of the hose will be attached to another hose barb which will then be attached to a PVC run all the way up through the wall and behind my aquarium. I ended up purchasing an Ecotech hose barb kit which also includes a strainer for the intake of the pump. You don't have to purchase the kit as any 3 quarter inch slip to slip hose barb will work. I ran into two issues plumbing the Vectra which were the main reasons for making this video to help others. The first issue was the coupling was a tad smaller than the standard 3 quarter inch PVC fitting. I'm not sure if Ecotech used metric fittings for their pump but the 3 quarter inch PVC will not seat all the way down into the coupling. No matter how hard I pushed or how hard I banged on the PVC it was not going to seat all the way in without some sort of modifications. The other issue is that the fittings are said to be compression fittings, meaning that you only need to be able to simply push the 3 quarter inch PVC into the coupling, place the collar on, and screw in without using any glue. The compression alone is supposed to hold the PVC in place. As you can see, this is not the case. Even with the hose barb sanded down to size, if you don't use glue, the barb will easily fall out with any sort of sideways pressure. You can imagine what the water damage would look like if the fitting shot out and allowed the pump to spray water all over the inside of your tank stand. There are certainly different ways to plumb the Vectra. Joey Mullen, the king of DIY, was kind enough to shoot me some photos of how he plumbed his pumps. Joey's using the Vectra M1 pump externally, but the same method he applied can be used to plumb the pump internally or submerged underwater. Joey hard plumbed the M1 pumps using a 2 inch adapter to a 1.5 inch PVC run. He also soft plumbed other M1 pumps using the same size adapters as the one he used to hard plumb as shown here. Thank you very much Joey for the pictures and the advice. To get my hose barb to properly seat into the coupling, I used the sanding head on my Dremel tool. You can use some sandpaper to accomplish the same goal, it'll just take a little bit longer. I chose to sand down the hose barb rather than sanding down the coupling in case I messed up. I have easier access to more hose barbs whereas if I messed up the coupling I'd have to reorder another one from Ecotech and wait for it to arrive. Before actually sanding the hose barb I practiced on a piece of scrap 3 and a quarter inch PVC. 
Once I got the idea of what I was trying to accomplish, I took the hose barb and started to slowly sand it down while occasionally seeing if it'll fit into the coupling. Once I got it down to size, the hose barb was able to fully insert into the coupling and seat itself all the way in. From here, I used clear PVC primer on the coupling and on the hose barb. I then used clear PVC glue on both pieces. I inserted the hose barb into the coupling and held it down into place while the glue set. I placed the collar on and screwed it down onto the M1 pump. I took the 3 quarter inch hose and placed it inside the dryer for 15 minutes to allow it to straighten out and soften up. I removed the hose and placed it over the hose barb, ensuring I used a plastic hose clamp to secure the hose down into place. Here's a glance at the final product. The Vector M1 will be attached to a 3 quarter inch hose and dropped into the salt water mixing container. Since the hose will not allow me to fully seal the lid onto the salt water container, I marked out a cutout with a marker and used a hacksaw to create an open slot for the 3 quarter inch hose. From there, the other end of the hose is connected to a second hose barb which is then connected to a PVC run leading into the wall. The PVC pops out behind the new aquarium where I will be plumbing it into the back of the glass tank. Once I get the new system all plumbed up, I'll show you a demonstration of how I'll be using the bucketless water changing system. I want to say thank you very much for your continuous support of my channel. I really do appreciate your views, your comments, and your likes. We'll see you guys next Sunday. Thanks again for watching.